to like our channel, thumbs up. Hi guys, it's Betty again with the recipe for my homeland. Today I am going to show you how I make ugali. Ugali is a staple food in East Africa all the way to South Africa, which is very loved. I'm currently living in Germany and I come from Kenya and I'm going to make the ugali with lamb stew and kale. Stay with me and see how I make my ugali. So guys, that was a lot of work separating the meat and cutting it and this is a lot of meat than I was expecting so I'm going to separate it into two portions and one I'm going to freeze it and the rest I'm going to use today and I have two bones but I am going to cook them and I'm going to make some broth and this broth I'm going to use it as a base for sauce instead of adding water then I'm going to add the broth which give it a nice taste so guys let's get started this year was a beautiful summer and I was able to grow some kales in my garden. Here are my spinach that I just harvested. Cooking is about to start. Here is my lamb. I have already washed it and I let it to drain the water. These are my kales already cut and drained the water. And this is oil, some bit of salt, the cayenne pepper. So those are the only store bought that I'm going to use. Onion. These onions are for making the kales and the stew. And these are my herbs that I got from the garden. So I'm going to use them, rosemary and oregano. And then I have garlic and ginger that I've already sliced. And that is my broth. And those are my tomatoes. The cooking is just about to start. I'm just preparing the cooker. We put a bit of oil. Parallel to it, I'm going also to be making the kales. Use all that oil. It's not so much. Let it heat a little bit and then I'm going to add the onion. As I'm waiting for the onions to cook, I'm going to scratch these two pieces. You can see really I don't have a lot of oil. It's because the broth has a lot of oil. The other side, I'm going to add the rest of the onions and let them cook so that I can add the cake. On this side of the lamb, the onions have cooked for some time now. So what I'm going to add is my garlic and my ginger. Then I'll mix them a little bit just for them to mix with the onions. And then I'm going to put my rosemary oregano on them. The reason why I didn't cut them is because I'm going to remove them. But the flavor will already have come out. So it is smelling so good. That side was too hot for me and I'm cooking here. And then of course at this stage I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper. Just a bit of it. I just want a piquant taste. And then of course my Royco Maggi mix. I prefer adding my spices at this stage because I fight to mix well with my meat. So let them cook for one minute and then I add my meat. I add my meat before I add my tomatoes because I want the meat to turn a little bit. you see what I mean. Here I'm going to add my meat. As you can see, my meat doesn't have any water. This stage I'm going to cook the lid and then I let the lamb absorb all that goodness. And once in a while, I'm going to be turning it because they to stick. My onions have cooked well. They are a little bit golden brown but not burnt. It's warming up well and now I'm going to add the, the kale spinach mix. I'm also going to use a lid, cover it so that it can go down and then I'm going also to reduce the heat. Things look good. At this stage, look, the food is having its own water. The broth that have come, it's really thick. Wow, look at that color. I love it. Look how the kales have shrunk. The I'm going to add to my kales is only salt. The reason is because I've seasoned my lamb quite well and I can have the taste of the lamb. It's a good combination. This one, I'll let it simmer. I put it quite low. I don't want it to cook for a long time so that it will retain all the vitamins. On this side, things are looking pretty good. At this stage, I'm going to remove the herbs. Mm. I'll just add a little bit of salt. I'm going to add my tomatoes. When you're cutting your tomatoes, please cut them into small slices so that it can cook fast. At this stage, I'm going to use some of my broth. I'm not going to use all of it. I tasted it before and it had all the flavor from the lamb. So it's adding more flavor to my food instead of adding water. But if you don't have the broth, you can add water. 
as you can see this is the sauce that i need it's perfect so i'm just going to let it simmer for another three minutes because the broth was already cooked so i don't need to cook it for long and then i'm done i'm going to show you how i make my ugali i'm going to use this flour that i bought from an indian shop it's called pan ugali is food made from maize flour this is white maize flour i love it and it's pre-cooked that means that i don't need so much time when i'm making my ugali i'm just going to wait for my water to come to a boiling point and then i'm going to use a whisk for the start it's going to become like orange as i continue stirring and adding more flour it's going to become thicker at that point i'll need my cooking stick and then turning it and we'll see what is going to happen my water has come to a boiling point this is very important otherwise your ugali is not going to taste good you need it to get hot so i keep adding and beating it so it's important that you keep doing it little by little and uh, whisking it this stage is very important it's going to determine how your ugali is going to turn I have pulled it away from the top because it's, as you can see, coming more porridge. So I will whisk and whisk until I don't have any of those small balls. It's actually flour that is not well mixed with the water. But when you do it correctly, it makes the ugali become very smooth. Uh, you need a little bit of energy, guys. Here's a bit of exercise. At this stage, I'm I can't work with the whisk anymore. Put it aside, add some flour to my cooking stick and keep adding the flour. You need to be careful so that it also doesn't become too thick. But of course, I still need more flour. Ooh, making sure that you don't really need weak hands. I think that should be enough. So keep in mind you don't as i said you don't need to make it very very dry because when you leave it to settle it also continue getting dried it's it's like porridge you know when you also make porridge and you let it settle it become more thicker this is it this is how you make your ugali into a circle get your cooking stick and then keep doing like this and then it will turn into a rackle that looks quite good when you put it on the plate and you want to serve it I am going to finish my video here. I'm starving and the food is smelling great. I'm going to show you the end result, guys. Until next time, I hope you're going to try this recipe. Thank you so much for subscribing and supporting me. And for those who have not subscribed, please subscribe.